gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Staff Gymnasium, home of the Brockton Boxers. And today, Staff Gymnasium plays host to the MIAA South Sectional Quarterfinals between the Quincy Presidents and your Brockton Boxers. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, a blowout in the first round. Brockton over Attleboro, 71-48, to the final score in that one. Looking for a similar result today are the boxers. Well, what gave the boxers a blowout the last game was their tenacious defense, especially in that second half. They went to a trap defense because the game, they was only up by four points at halftime, but they came out like fire and fury and just ran over uh, the Bombardiers. They ran out of gas. And so hopefully if, um, if Brockton uh, has any issues with Quincy, they go to that trap defense and the defense will produce offense. The Presidents wearing their visiting blue jerseys, red trim around the white numbers. Brockton wearing their home whites, red trim around the black numbers. Quincy off the tip, this is number 12. Brendan Fitzpatrick, the senior guard. He takes a three, no good off the front of the rim. Rebound to Abu Kaba, quickly off to Marcus Azor. Azor to Kaba, pump fake for three. Inside now the paint. A couple of nice moves to put up the underhanded Layup, no good. Quincy coming down with the rebound. It's Franco Calabro. Another three. Quincy trying to just hawk him up and take a big lead early. That they're unsuccessful on their first two attempts. Yeah. Um, Brockton with good deep defensive defense. Sonny Oak and Lola down low. That was a tough shot by Sonny. Nice job. But uh, so far, Brockton's defense, as far as rebounding goes, has, has been good. And like you said, Quincy's put up two shots, no rebounds. If they're going to do that, they're going to have to uh, make some shots. Now the finger roll attempt, no good. Drees Harris is a little bit too long. Steps out of bounds off the pass for Marcus Azor. Well, the Presidents have earned their way into the quarterfinals by virtue of beating the sixth seeded Marshfield Rams 64 to 58. Miles, this game could be tough because Marshfield Lost to Brockton, but only by one point earlier on in the season. Exactly, and Brockton has to remember this team beat uh, Catholic Memorial in, the, in their first round of the playoffs. And Brockton lost to Catholic Memorial. Step back three for Azor, no good. Rebound uncontested to Damian Markov, but he let it roll out of play. A minute and a half into this one, it's two nothing boxers over the Presidents. The winner earning the right to face either Needham or New Bedford. The two-seeded Rockets of Needham or the 15, excuse me, the seventh-seeded New Bedford Whalers. And a lot of people are writing off the Whale, uh, the Rockets as Drees Harris hits a three and Brockton's up by five. Yeah, nice job by Harris. Shakes the defender and then finds the open shot and hits it. A lot of people, Miles, in the south sectional bracket writing off the Needham Rockets, the second seed. They went 17 and, and three during the regular season, the same record as the Brockton Boxers. But a lot of people say that their opponents weren't that good. And the seventh seeded Whalers are gonna upset them and face Brockton. Yeah, really, you just had to wipe out the regular season because when you got March Madness in the high school playoffs going on, it really doesn't matter, especially when you get past the first or second round. It's, it's anybody's ball game. It depends who, um, who executes better and who controls the boards. Well, Jerese Harris and Brendan Fitzpatrick getting into a little conversation and the refs broke that one up. And now Harris is gonna be called for the foul. Yeah, looking at the rafters, he knew that one was gonna be called. Yeah, the, the guard got by Harris, but early on, you don't wanna get in early foul trouble. You, you've got some um, players that'll back you up if your guard gets past you. That is the first foul called about two and a half minutes into this game. And the layup is blocked by Abu Kawa, but they're going to rule. Azor called for the hit. Gee, I didn't see Azor. I thought they were calling on Abu Kaba. I didn't see much contact with Azor. I didn't see any contact with Azor. No good on his first attempt. Quincy yet to get on the board here two and a half minutes in. Yeah, and they're going to have to start getting on the board if they want to stay with this Brockton team because 
Brockton's known to start slow, but then as the game progresses, they really start warming up. Finally, Remy Chebo hitting his second attempt in five to one. Quincy yet to hit anything from the field, however. Azor called for the travel. Well, that's something you don't see much, Azor traveling. He's very good at handling the basketball. That's Chebo back to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick stutter step to create some separation back to Chebo. Chebo stopping and popping, but he's going to be called for the travel. Yeah, he tried to do too much. It was good defense by uh, Abu Kaba. Azor to Kaba. Kaba driving in with a head of steam. Counted in one for Abu Kaba. Yeah, nice drive to the basket. Good call by the referee because he was, as he went up, he was, uh, there was some contact. It's a hit called on Damian Markov, a six foot senior. Kaba short on his attempt. Sonny Okamola hit the hardwood in the paint, but no call on that. Seven to one, boxes on top. 4.45 to go in the first quarter. Chevo spinning, kicking it out. A long three is no good. And taking that one was Franco Calabro. Okamola touched it out of play. So the president's retain possession. Yeah, Quinn's got to get something going here. One point, the first three and a half minutes is not going to get you uh, the next round. Patrick calling for it. Now he gets it down low to Markov. Layup is good, and oh. Quincy finally hit something from the field. Yeah, it was a tough shot, but he made it. Harris. Floater, good. Ooh, nice job with Harris. On the move, in the air. Hits the little floater. Thought about the three instead. Grove inside, Quincy throwing this one out of play. Nine to three, just about halfway through the first quarter. Yeah, um, Brockton's defense has Quincy all amped up. Um, like Brockton did against Attleboro, and there was a lot of passes by Attleboro that were thrown away. Okay, well, Ooh, trying to there was contact there, no foul. And Coach Bob Bowen on the bench saying that's a foul. Oh, Melvin oh, Gonzalez oh. going to come into the game for the Presidents. As is Junior Montero, a three, no good. For those keeping score at home, 0 for 5 beyond the arc. Is oh. Azor gets past Chebo. Nice job by Azor. Yes, yes. He went right around the um, screen right there. Defensive play was thought he might run into him for the, for the charge, but Azor nicely went around it and made the tough shot underneath the basket. Timeout, Quincy with 3.27 to go in the first quarter. It's 11 to three. Miles, Quincy's 0 for five beyond the arc, but they're still hawking him up. Yeah, they, they, they got to adjust on their uh, offensive boards there. They're just getting one shot and that's it. And, and you just can't do that. You gotta get, get in there and crash the boards with Brockton. So let's take a look at the bracket. As we mentioned, winner of this game will face either New Bedford or Needham. And that game will be Monday night at 7.30 at Taunton High School if the boxers should get that far. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. On the other side, and it's probably a good thing the boxers slid to a three seed because you've got the one seeded Mansfield Hornets on the other side, 20 and two, their record on the season. The layup for Markov is good. Markov's got some speed, Brockton have to correct that. So the other side of the bracket, you've got Mansfield, Newton South, BC High, Wellesley, Newton North. Newton North defeated the Boxers here on Super Bowl Sunday. Braintree, Catholic Memorial, and Bridgewater Raynham. There you go. And that's a very hectic side of the bracket. You had BR upsetting Catholic Memorial 62 to 55 in the first round. Newton North handily defeating the Braintree Womps. BC High beating Wellesley by 12 and Mansfield destroying Newton South. 
Layup attempt, no good. Getting his own rebound is Will of Zargis. And the ball rolls out of bounds off of Brockton. Yeah, good defense by Brockton, rejecting the inside shot by Quincy. So if you're the boxers in the South Sectional Final, you would hope to see Bridgewater random, but that's probably not going to happen. Newton North or Mansfield slightly more likely. Jalen Lee tipping it behind him, loose ball on the floor. Marquis Dos Santos, hot potato, nobody can get a hand on it. Lee finally comes up with it and gets it off to Junior Montero. So it's 11 to five, Brockton on top by six. Dos Santos throwing it out of play off of Fitzpatrick. This is the end of a hectic week for boxer athletics and BCA sports. One after the other after the other for BCA as Fitzpatrick has it, trying to get around Lee. One hands it to Zargis, and Zargis throws it into Montero's arms who carried it out of play. Yeah, Montero read that very well. It's Tuesday night. The Lady Boxers got their playoffs underway here at Staff Gymnasium. <laughs> defeating Durfee 58-38. to 38. Right after that, the power of technology brought you the Boxer Hockey preliminary round matchup against Framingham at the Canton Ice House. Wednesday night, the Boxers got their playoff run underway against the Attleboro Blue Bombardiers, defeating them 71 to 48. Thursday night, we were at Newton South. There's Ooh. Dos Santos down low. Yeah, Mon glass Montero hand. did a nice job reading his guard underneath and getting him the basketball. Every time without fail, the opposing team thinks we're the checking table. Yeah, I don't know, it's because we look so professional, I'm not sure. <laughs> when you show up in a tie, people think you're important. Yeah, yeah. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter, Brockton by 10, 15 to five. The winner faces either Needham or New Bedford in the South sectional semifinals. It's Thursday night down at Newton South. The Lady Boxers losing by 19 to the top seed of Lions. It was a fun game to broadcast. It wasn't very competitive, but we had Steve Burton as the color commentator for uh, the better part of the second half. Yeah, yeah, I mean, can't get no better than that. Nice outside shot by Montero. 13 point lead for the Boxers. Another three from the corner. This one, finally good for Brendan Fitzpatrick. Gonna call a carry on Junior Montero. 14.1 to go, shot clock is off here in the first quarter. Fitzpatrick, long three, no good. Three seconds to go, a half court shot for Montero is gonna come up short. And at the end of the first quarter, Brockton up by 10, 18 to eight over the Quincy Presidents in the South sectional quarterfinal. Miles, both teams have started off slow, but as we've seen all year long, Brockton likes to turn on the gas sometime in the middle of the second quarter and then they just pull away. Yeah, well that first quarter, the reason it's 18 to eight is because of Brockton's control of the boards on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. And 
Quinn's going to have to do something about that. The presidents are going to have to adjust somehow, get more people involved in the rebounding process. Otherwise, they, don't, they, they won't get that close. I mean, they hit a few outside shots there, but if they can't get in there and uh, mix it up on the boards, they're going to have to hit most of their outside shots. Quincy's game plan very clearly was come in here, hawk up a bunch of threes, hope that half of them fall, and yeah. you might come away with the lead. And, and that's, that's, I'm sure that's the way they're looking at it, especially now the coach sees that how, how tough Brock is on the uh, defense as well as the offensive boards. Wet spot underneath Navon Reed, who is fresh into the game. Tejon Glendardi on the floor as well. Brockton adjusting well down the stretch to the loss of Eldon Terry, who got the boot. Yeah, and, and that, that was a big loss for the Brockton boxes, but Coach Bowen had his team adjust to the absence, and, and they've done a good job with it. Reed. Stepped ah. over the line. Should have took the shot, and, and you saw the um, too many feet moving as, as he decided to go in. And he's done that a number of times this year. He's going to have to somehow um, correct that, that little move he's got. So you lose Eldon Terry about halfway through the season, just, just north of halfway through the season. And then Tijon Glendardi has a concussion. He's out for two weeks. Yeah, and... Um, Tayshawn's done a good job coming back from that concussion and uh, really contributed to the uh, boxes. Out of play off of Quincy. Okanlola Abukawa into the game for Brockton. Jalen Lee and Glenn Darty will come out. Dos Santos inbounding the ball to Abukawa. Kawa turns it over to Calabro. Another turnover, this Abu Kaba coming up with a token. Low off Whoa. the glass and in. Nice little bounce bounce pass in front of the defender to, uh, uh, to Okandola. First layup goes nowhere for Fitzpatrick. Abu Kaba comes up with the rebound. Now Kaba to Montero, wide open. Three wow. is good. Squared up nicely. He knew once he shot it, it was going in. You can just tell by the body language. 23 to 10. Brockton up by 13 with 6.45 to go in the second quarter. And a nice little backdoor play right there by the Quincy High team. Damian Markov, now Dos Santos a three, no good. Up and down the court they go, Fitzpatrick as the shot's waved off. Oh, nice call right there, illegal pick by the um, Quincy guard there and the ref caught it. Nice job by the referee, Red. He's one of the better referees in the uh, high school program. We've mentioned it before. Good awareness. Yeah, good awareness. 20 feet away from the ball was the illegal screen. Kaba pump fakes for three. Gives it over to Azor. Azor to Samuel Darius. He takes a long two, no good. Kaba over everybody. The bucket's waved off, and a hold is going to be called against Quincy. Yeah, another good call by the ref. The, the uh, foul was definitely before the uh, he threw it up in the um, in, up to the rim. Zargis is going to come out in favor of Brendan Cavini. Yeah, Cavini, 6'4", one of the taller guys on the team. That's Calabro to Chebo, a three is good. 23-15 with 5.50 to go in the first half. Azor driving. Oh, nice drive. Shot as Louis Charles hit Whoa. the deck. Wow. Now Chebo, underhanded oh, layup oh, oh. is good. Nice move by Chebo. Here come the presidents. And a foul is called. Again, the um, 
Quincy High team is doing the same thing that Attleboro did. They're trying to run with Brockton. Sure, you can do that in the first half, but what do you have in the second half for gas if you keep running with this team? And, and what do you have on, on the bench to help you out? Okamola can't hold on to it. Chebo comes up with the loose ball and off to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick loses it, able to keep it on the president's side of the court and he's got it back with 10 on the shot clock. The long three comes up way short. Darius up to Azor, Azor wow. underhanded finger roll, no good. And they're gonna say it went out of play off of Louis Charles. Wow. That was just a tough roll for Azor, it was a nice move. Ball just didn't go into the basket. See Brockton playing the main Boston. defense. Boston. Whistle and a stoppage. Uh, they missed that one. That did go off the Brockton player, but then it hit the Quincy player, I thought, from my angle. Quick three off the inbounds pass, no good. Open roll on contested rebound. 440 to go in the Second quarter, 25-17. Yeah, Oaken Lowe is a force underneath. Nobody can really match up with him on this Quincy team. Number 20 for the Brockton Boxers coming into the game. Not listed on any of our rosters. That's Todd Robinson. Yeah, he came in and got a little air time um, in that last playoff game. Coming from the JV squad. Box is only up by seven points, excuse me, six points. Still 419 left in this second quarter. And that's another thing, Quincy's gonna have to make their free throws when they ever get a chance to. Brockton up as much as 13 as Oaken Lola counted in one. Fitzpatrick's going to come out of the game. Lola short on his long free throw attempt. Gets his own rebound that was ping-ponging around. Another offensive uh, point for Oaken Lola, and it's good. Give him, a, give him a Tommy point for hustle right there, Matt. That puts the boxers back up by 10. Cabo on the floater is uh, good. Nice floater. Timeout called by Quincy, 3.41 to go. Brockton back up by 12, 31 to 19. The score, Miles, second quarter has had some swings. Yeah, definitely swings, and that last minute was uh, a boxer swing. Um, Quincy was only down by six points, and somehow boxers turned it on a little bit there in the last minute. Now they're up by about, uh, we got 31, 19, so they're up 11 points. 12 points. Quincy is close as six at one point in this quarter. They started down by 10, now they're down by 12. Yeah, and just to go show you how quick a, a game can change in the, in the game of basketball with tough defense and um, good offense. Put together, you can really make a run. You mentioned the other side of a wild bracket. Brockton fans already getting a little blessing in the fact that CM was upset by Bridgewater Raynham. Hoping that Mansfield does the same. We've beaten BC High already this year, but Mansfield, always one of the better teams in the state. Again, two straight 20 win seasons for the Hornets. Chevo down low, nowhere to go with it, throws it between four boxers. 
Wow. Quincy able to draw the foul. It's number 11 at the line, Robert Andre. Good job by Okanola on the defense. Unfortunately, there was some contact, and the referee was right underneath to call it. First attempt. One to two, 31 to 20. It's an 11 point lead for the Boxers with 3.15 to go in the, in the first half. Goes over to Robinson. He can't hold on to it. Quincy takes over. It's Chebo. Chebo traveled very clearly with it. Not called, and Azor comes up with the rebound. Azor trying to get it out to Okinola. Yeah, he really had no way to pass him. Like you said, try to get it to Okinola, but defense, that was a defensive call right there. The defense caused uh, number 11 to uh, Andre, Robert Andre to travel. Chebo's gonna come out. Fitzpatrick back in the game. Azor to Abu Kaba's back in. He takes a three, no good. Louis Charles as Jerry Harris is going to come back into the game. Now it's Fitzpatrick with two and a half to go. Glenn Darty joining Harris courtside to finish out the first half. A long three is good for Melvin Gonzalez. Big shot right there for Gonzalez. Cut the lead down to eight. Quincy bringing a sizable fan section here at Staff Gymnasium. And Robinson good on his short jumper. Yeah, nice job with the stop and pop. It's Patrick getting away from Robinson. To yeah. Gasps from the crowd. Yeah, Brendan Fitzpatrick's got some definite dribble skills. Four presidents, nobody in the paint. A three for Gonzalez comes up short, and no presidents were in the paint to grab that rebound. So Okinola did the honors. Now Robinson out to Okinola, and he's called for the travel. Harris, Montero, Glendardi into the game. It's going to be Robinson, Louis Charles, and Okinola on the bench. Yeah, just way too many travel calls by the Brooklyn Boxers. They need to cut that down here in the second, uh, in the second half. 120 to go, Chebo back in for the Presidents. He's swatted from Glenn Darty, yeah. and the Presidents will retain possession. Yeah, good patience by Darty. That was triple coverage. The other two guys committed on the defense and then the offensive man went up with the shot, and Darty just wait and swatted it away. Patrick from way downtown is good. And a seven point lead for the Boxers back into one of those tremendous waves from the bomb cyclone. Kaba draws the push. No, actually, the, the, the Quincy thought it was a charge, but the push happened before the charge. It's going to be Will Zargis. He's Brockton now in a one-on-one -on -one bonus situation. Cabas at the line. Quincy's bench had multiple issues with that call. That's the second personal foul on Zargis, who just committed a lane violation that was not called. All the way down to the X. Chebo to Fitzpatrick, 45 seconds to go, 15 on the shot clock for the Presidents. Now it's Damian Markov, Markov looking for Chebo. Chebo to Fitzpatrick, he takes a three, no good. And Kava comes up with a rebound. Brockton might want to take a little time off the clock. And we'll do just that, there's a full second between the shot clock and game clock. A whistle and a stoppage, and it's going to go against the boxers. And 
they call that on Glenn Doherty. Nineteen point one shot clock off Quincy with the ball. Okilola and Lee into the game. Kaba and Glenn Doherty come out. Chebo off to Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick working against Harris, kicks it to Markov. Markov to the glass. Counter in one for Damian Markov. Nice drive to the basket by Markov. As Harris called for the hit. Zargis comes out in favor of Cavini. Markov at the charity stripe to attempt the three points the old fashioned way. 4.9 on the clock, and it's no good. Azor with the rebound. Plenty of time for the boxers. Azor loses it, Oak and Lola long three, no good. Montero didn't get the shot up in time. And the buzzer sounds miles where at halftime it's 33 to 28. Quincy has clawed their way back to within five. Yeah, exactly. They've clawed their way back. They made some big shots. Um, Brockton's problem, too many turnovers with traveling. Uh, threw a few passes away to let uh, Quincy back into this basketball game here in the uh, end of the second quarter. Quincy started off slow, didn't hit a field goal for the first three and a half minutes of this game. They've been down as much as 13, as close as now within five. Yeah, they, they've actually warmed up their game in that second quarter. They feel comfortable now playing Brockton, and so anything can happen in that third quarter. Well, it's 33 to 28 at halftime. Brockton on top of the Quincy Presidents in the MIAA South Sectional quarterfinal, with the winner going on to face either Needham or New Bedford in the South Sectional semis. We're gonna step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey, Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? We're going swimming. We're going back in. Yeah. I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey. I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Staff Gymnasium for second half action of the MIAA South Sectional Quarterfinals. Whew. Between the Quincy Presidents and your Brockton Boxers, once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game, Miles Jackson. Miles, the bomb cyclone has hit New England and it's brought some incredible waves and these two teams are playing right into that. Brockton is led by as many as 13, and they come into the second half with a lead of five. Yep, Quincy's still in this ball game. Gives, gives their fans something to uh, cheer about here in the second half. Yeah. Travel called on Quincy. So the message at halftime from Coach Bowen was not kosher enough to repeat on TV. Well, I'm sure it wasn't. But the gist of it was, Enough with the fancy footwork, just play. And the 
fancy footwork, everyone trying to take the extra step, has led to numerous turnovers and travels called against the boxers. Yeah, too many in that first half of the boxes. They've got to cut down on that. Admitted in, Fitzpatrick for three, no good. The score sheet is still clean here in the second half. Marcus Azor over to Louis Charles. Charles looking for Oak and Lola, foul committed. It's gonna go against Fitzpatrick, his second personal. Lola to Azor. It's the first of three big games at every level of basketball today. More on that in a moment. Okunlola spinning with it. Gets around a blocker. Abu Kaba down low. No calls. Chevo comes down with the rebound. Wow, Abu Kaba looked like he was fouled there. Fitzpatrick around the world and in. Yeah, he's a dangerous player, Fitzpatrick. Very quick, good ball handler. Harris, quick release, three, no good. The rebound to Zargis. Fitzpatrick with it again, driving, gives it out to Zargis. His three is good, and it's a tie ball game. Yeah, that's Quincy's danger. They've definitely warmed up, starting to hit their shots, got some momentum going for them right now. Brockton's gonna have to answer. Harris, three, might have been tipped by Fitzpatrick. Quincy with the rebound and a chance to take their first lead of this game. Handing off to Fitzpatrick. Zargis thought about the three, instead turns it over to Okinlola. Three on two, Okinlola all the way in. Strong to the bucket and in. Yeah, nice job by Okinlola. Good defense, took the ball coast to coast, made the shot with a body all on him. Hard to see if there was any contact, but a nice job. Chebo, three, no good. Azor with the rebound now, a chance to make this two possession game again for Brockton. To Louis Charles, to Kaba, three from the top of the key is no good. A little bit of hesitation might have killed that one. Now it's Zargis, three for the lead is good. And Quincy has a one point lead. Yeah, Zargis got a little hot hand going. Timeout called by Brockton and the Quincy huddle is all fired up. They're up 36 to 35 with 4.42 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, Quincy's starting to make some shots. It was only a matter of time before they felt comfortable out there. And it looks like they're feeling real comfortable here in the third quarter. All right, so big day in basketball land. Starting off here, my double A tournament action. Then we've got Duke versus North Carolina, the Battle of Tobacco Road. Wow, that's big. Huge game. And then later on, you've got the Celtics at the Houston Rockets. Big game right there for the Celtics. Going against one of the premier teams out west with uh, Harden and Chris Paul and company. And a 14 game winning streak to boot. Oh, that should be very interesting this evening. Yeah, right now, Quincy, they have a lot of confidence and um, Brockton's gonna have to some, somehow calm this confidence down and the way you calm it down is with good defense and then it equals good offense. Okinola to Azor. Now Louis Charles takes the three, no good. Offensive board to Abu Kaba off the yeah. glass and then Brockton back with a one point lead. Yeah, Abu Kaba did a nice job softly off the glass and in. This is Franco Calibro, and Quincy puts it out of play. Now when, when Quincy turns the ball over, Brockton needs to capitalize and, and get a shot. If they can capitalize on Quincy's turnovers, it just makes it a little bit easier to come out of here with the win. Coming for Louis Charles, who can't corral it. Now regaining composure, floater no good. Chebo with the rebound and able to get it to Calabro. 
Reverse Ooh, layup. Nice Good job. Game. For Damian Markov and Quincy back with a one point lead. Haymaker for Haymaker here. Yeah, Markov flying in the air on that one. Underneath the basket and in. Nice shot. Azor fouled by Fitzpatrick. That's going to be his third. And that's what Azor wants to do. If you can get Fitzpatrick in a little foul trouble, that will help the uh, Brockton guards because he's a very tough competitor. He's going to come out of the game in favor of Melvin Gonzalez. Hit called on Chebo, and that'll put Abu Kaba at the line. Glenn Darty Montero coming into the game for the boxers. Kaba with a chance to make this again a Brockton lead. Okinola, Louis Charles come out. Yeah, coach is getting some fresh legs in there. He still wants a fast-paced game. See if he can wear out these uh, Quincy High presidents. Kaba no good. Glendardi flying over. Everybody grabs the rebound. Handing it to Kaba yeah. now. Azor with it. Azor stutter step in. Yeah, nice Foul job by Azor. In. Azor has done that a number of times in this third quarter. Drive to the basket and get the foul and draw the foul. It's going to be the third foul on Zargis. Nick Cedrone is going to come into the game for the Presidents. Azor missing his first attempt. Now trying to get Brockton back a one point lead. Chevo comes out. So Brockton's going to take advantage here. The two best players for the Presidents are on the bench. Yeah, you're right, Matt. They need to take advantage. They, two, of the, two of Quincy's better players are on the bench. They need to capitalize on defense. Foul's going to be called on. Wow, that was a ticky-tack foul called on Kaba. That's Markov to Zargis to a three for Ooh. Gonzalez is good. Quincy now with their first multi-point lead. They're up 41 to 39. Azor three, good. Nice shot. Big shot by the guard. Marcus. Zargis losing it as Bob Bowen calls for the travel. It's now Calabro in a kick ball called on Montero. Good defense by Montero. Only supposed to call a kick ball if Another player picks up the ball from that same team. Nobody had yet touched it. Good point there, Matt. Stifling defense here for the Brockton Boxers. Now Zargis takes a three. No good. Glenn Darty uncontested rebound. 2.15 to go as Azor just slipped. Back to Azor now. 19 on the shot clock, 205 in the third quarter, 42-41. Harris, three, no good. Glenn Darty rebound. He was elbowed in the face on the way down and no call. Montero wow. for three, no good. And it hit the top of the backboard. Quincy ball. Well, Glenn Darty did a good job. He was hammered, but kept his cool. Now Cavini back in. He'll replace Zargis, who has three personal fouls. Drone to the corner. Calibro, he turns it over to Junior Montero. Montero down low for Kaba, counted in one for Abu Kaba. That was a beautiful transition game right there by the boxes. The defensive steal, the two on one, and the, um, the um, 
execution on the transition game. Two point score, chance for a three point play right here by Kaba. Markov called for a hit to the head, his second personal. 141 to go in the third quarter, and Quincy is in some deep foul trouble. Yeah. So the Quincy's bench, we'll see what they're made of. With Patrick back into the game, he has been Quincy's best player today. Corner three, no good. Abu Kaba grabbing the rebound over Glenn Darty. Now Harris way up off the glass, no good, too much mustard on it. Gonzalez comes up with it. Gonzalez to Markov off the glass and in. Nice job, Quincy, on the transition game right there. Azor smartly slowing things up here. 112 to go, 20 in the shot clock. It's 45-43. Azor to Kaba as we near the end of the third quarter and the travel called on Brockton. Zargis Chevo come in. And it's going to be Cedrone and Cavini out. I tell you that the, the um, bench players for Quincy on that little stint right there did a nice job of uh, not making any mistakes and uh, keeping the uh, presidents right in this basketball game. The ball almost hitting us. Well, we're right here in the action. Wasn't so much the ball I was worried about there, but, but the, body. the body of Marcus <laughs> Azor, who came crashing down. Quick passing now, Gonzalez takes a three, no good too long, but Markov grabs it. Quickly back oh, to Gonzalez, traveling. he's called for the travel. Good defense by the boxes. They need to come down and uh, score a basket. This has been one Wacky game, Brockton led by as much as 13 as Navon Reed takes a Ooh. three and it's good. Big three by the freshman, just got into the ball game and hits a big shot for his team. Glenn Darty trying to create separation. Gonzalez three short. Abu Kala flying in for the rebound. Shot clock off, Brockton's gotta waste the clock out here. Yeah, you gotta run the clock down. And instead Markov comes away with it. Now Glenn Darty up to Navon Reed. Behind the back for Montero yes. off the glass in with five seconds to go. And Brockton back up to a seven point lead. Fitzpatrick down low to Markov off the glass, no good. And the buzzer sounds before he can throw a Woo. back attempt. Miles, what a roller coaster of the game. It's 50 to 43, Brockton on top at the end of the third quarter. Well, I tell you, that was some last two minutes by both teams. They were up and down the court, giving it their all on defense as well as offense. Brockton came ahead, thankfully, in those last two minutes to uh, gain a uh, seven point lead at the moment. Still anybody's game going into this fourth quarter. Brockton has to keep up the tough defense and energy in order to put away this Quincy team because they're not going away, Matt. What we noticed here in the third quarter, when the game got really fast paced up and down the court, Brockton was creating turnovers and getting transition buckets on the other end. Yeah, and that's the key right there. You said Brockton was creating turnovers, and that's what they have to keep on doing, playing that tenacious defense, coming back down and taking advantage of the defense and scoring some points, and that's exactly what they did. So it's 50 to 43, Brockton up by seven miles. What do they have to do to hold on to this lead against a potent Quincy offense? They have to keep up the high intensity defense because it seems like when they play great defense, the offense just comes with it. So if they can just keep up this great defense, they know that this uh, Quincy team is playing most of their starters out there. They've put in a few bench players. They've done a good job, but now we're in the fourth quarter, heading down the stretch. Azor able to get around Calibro now to the corner for Reed, who's called for another, another travel. travel. Same exact thing we exactly. saw on the other end of the court in the it, first half. Yeah, he's going to have to work on that um, during the offseason. Actually, if Brockton can go to the next round, they need, he needs to work on that at the next practice. Just, he kicks back his leg before yeah. he starts driving inside, and it comes down out of bounds. Now corner three, good for Zargis. 
makes it a four point ball game. Reed driving Ooh, with the trap, the where's the call? Oh, good. He was bumped. Eventually. Even when Coach Bowens it. let him know, come on. Unbelievable. When I say eventually, yeah. <laughs> pretty much after the shot went up. Wow. Zargis has four personals now, and Cedroni's gonna come in for him. Reed good on his first attempt, so Zargis will be on the bench presumably until the last couple of minutes. Yeah, Zargis is, he's getting a breather. You can tell he's breathing pretty hard, so he'll only be out for a few. Reed, one of two. And a foul on the rebound attempt that's going to go against Glenn Darty on and over the back. Darty has a lot of spring in his jump. Sometimes he'll jump so high that uh, it looks like uh, he's on over the back on sometimes. I'm Changing not sure I didn't see it. Changing the call now to Jalen Lee. Okay, yeah. For a push. Because I didn't see Glenn Darty in the action there. Ooh. Now almost coming up with a steal. Down low to Cedroni, reverse layup, no good. Fighting for the rebound is Glenn Darty and nice quickly job. giving it to Azor. He did a nice job fighting for that. Lee called for the travel. Well, I don't know about that one. The left foot is what they're saying moved, but it did not leave the floor. Gonzalez, who has hit a couple of big threes in this game, back in for the Presidents. Brockton's Seven going. Left. Yep, Brockton's going with the full court press. They're calling on one of the assistant coaches a warning. It's going to go against assistant coach Wayne Butler. Official and, warning in the book. You know, I, I, I can't really blame him because uh, there's some pretty sketchy calls here, here in this third quarter. And, uh, but he's got to learn to control his emotions over there on the bench, especially now he's given a warning. so. He's gonna have to zip it up, unfortunately, and uh, just cheer his players on. So next call against the Butler will be a technical foul. Azor with the ball, 51-46. Montero stutter step, thought about taking the three, instead gives it to Azor. Azor driving inside, nice, counted in nice. one for Marcus Azor. Azor again drives to the basket and gets the uh, call. Chance for a three-point play here. It's going to be Markov's third personal foul. As the foul issues continue for the Presidents. Eight-point lead for the Boxers, 54 to 46. Markov out to Fitzpatrick, quick three, no good. Four boxers in the area of the rebound, it goes to Navon Reed. Now this is Azor to Montero to Lee. Leads back to Reed to Montero, the triangles working for the boxers. Yeah, nice job by the boxers to use a little bit of his clock. Lundardi swinging the rebound out of play. Kaba back in, Reed will take a seat. Uh, it's gonna be Jalen Lee on the bench for Brockton. Now what Quincy, with six minutes left in this ball game, Quincy, when they take that outside shot, they're gonna have to have a couple of their big guys crash the boards. Chevo thought about it. Draws a hold against Glenn Darty. Gee, I thought he traveled before the, the foul. Fitzpatrick way down near the Brockton charity stripe off the inbounds pass. 
lost control of it. Now Glenn Darty trying to force the turnover. Chebo step away, he thought about the three instead, winds up and a reach is gonna be called. Oh, on come Darty. on. What a ticky tack. What a ticky tack foul, unbelievable. Chebo down low, and another call is going to go against Glenn Darty. Now that time there was contact with the body. Okanola is going to come in for Glenn Darty. At least two of those fouls have been. Shouldn't have been called. Yeah. Just another, hur another, another hurdle Brockton's going to have to um, jump over is um, the referee with some of the calls here in this fourth quarter. Not going, not going with um, Brockton. So Brockton's really have to buckle down and really concentrate. They can't, first of all, they cannot let this game be close when they get to around the two or three minute mark. They're going to have to ha open it up to at least eight. 10 point lead because if you let it get into a six or five point lead with just a few minutes left in the ball game, the referees can dictate on who might win this thing. And you know, you don't want that to happen. So Chevo's gonna be at the line for one shot coming out of the timeout. Glenn Darty with four personal fouls on the bench. Oak and Lola is his replacement. Jerry's Harris also into the game for Brockton. I think that's a good move by Coach Bowen to put Okanola back in there. Let um, Glenn Darty rest a little bit. Referees seem to be focusing on him. No good on his second attempt. So it's 54-47. Brockton with the ball, a chance to extend the lead to as much as 10. Harris for three. No good. Kaba flying in for the rebound. It goes to Melvin Gonzalez. He hands off to Chebo, being double teamed. And now it's Fitzpatrick to the corner, intercepted by Harris, and nice. Azor has it. Azor turning on the Jets, floater. Nice, Good. nice. Great job by Azor to stop before he ran into the ball player. And Chebo was begging for a charging call, does not get it. No, he's not getting the Academy Award on that one. Fitzpatrick, three, bang. Big shot there. Six to 50, it's a six point lead. Technically a two possession game. Brockton on top. If you're Brockton, the marching orders to slow this down. Yeah. Waste out the clock. Kaba, two, no good. A couple of bodies hit the floor. Still down is Markov. Now it's Fitzpatrick to Chebo. Step away, three, short. That's going to fall in at the front of the rim and goes in. So it's a one possession game, 56 to 53. Marcus Azor, 4.20 to go in the fourth quarter. It's 56 to 53. Brockton on top, and we're stuck in one of those tremendous bomb cyclone type waves again. Loose ball. Calibro comes up with it. Intercepted. Harris tipping it away to Cabo on the floor. A jump ball called, the first jump ball called of this game. Nice hustle by Kaba. And he dove in there. And a tech called on Brendan Fitzpatrick. So what a plot twist, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, he felt has that. Four he, fouls. Yeah, he felt that uh, he was fouled on the play. Clearly, there was no foul on the play. Both teams are going after the basketball. There was some contact on the ground, but both teams are going after the basketball. I, I don't know what he's complaining about. And they say the ref just came over, explained it right in front of us to say he argued possession, threw out a cuss word. Mm -hmm. He's tech, he's teed up. He's got the technical and the fourth foul against Fitzpatrick. So Harris is going to take the free throws. So 
So the technical foul trumps the possession. So it's going to be Brockton ball. Quincy would have had possession of that ball. Harris good on his first attempt to make it a four point ball game. So Fitzpatrick was called for a tech and a person. So now we're gonna set the Mad Dog research team to work because mathematically, if he's counted for two fouls on that, he's fouled out of this game. Exactly. And I don't see him in the game. So Azor with the ball is, we've set the scoring table into a frenzy trying to figure out if Fitzpatrick's fouled out or not. Fitzpatrick has four fouls. That's Markov, bad angle, no good. Okanola with the rebound. So this one's gotten completely crazy. It's a five point lead now for Brockton. Harris thought about the three, almost traveled with it. Calibro called for the hold. Yeah, Ron Harris did a good job keeping his feet stationary. As you said, it was on. He almost moved them, but he didn't. So he's at the free throw line, and now free throws are critical. Even though it's 3:33 on the clock, very critical for Brockton to make these free throws. Harris at the line for a one-and-one -one shooting situation. Next foul against Quincy will put Brockton in a double bonus for two automatic shots. Harris can't capitalize. But Brockton has to come back down and play some tough defense. Chebo intercepted by Azor. Nice. Azor the little having, guy got up to grab that pass. Yeah, Azor having a big game this evening for the boxes, showing his senior leadership. Three, top of the key for Kaba is good. Big shot by Kaba. Brockton back up by eight, 61 to 53. Three minutes to go in the South sectional quarterfinal. Zargis is followed by Oaken Lola. Wow. The winner of this game again plays the winner of the Needham Rockets and New Bedford Whalers game that taking place tomorrow afternoon. There's a corner three for Gonzalez who has been hot from that spot this game. Yeah, he's really kept this team close to the boxes. Big shot. So, the self Oh! Azor. What a shot by Azor. Little shake and bake. Had the defensive man commit in the air. Azor took the shot, got fouled, and made the shot. Big time senior play right there by Azor. Third personal foul against Chebo with Azor a chance to make it an eight point lead and he does, 64 to 56, Brockton up with two and a half minutes to go. South sectional semifinal at Taunton High School, Tuesday night, 7.30, Chebo for three is good. Wow. Azor setting up the boxer offense, 2.15 to go. Brockton up by five now, 64 to 59. Azor to Montero. Montero back to Azor. Holding a 10 on the shot clock. Brockton's got to get moving here. Now five on the clock and a turnover Ooh. right out of the pocket yes. was Calibro. And he hands off to Zargis. Zargis to Markov. Markov drawing oh, the Oh, come foul. on. Unbelievable, unbelievable Oakenola call. called for the block. Like I said, if, if, if the boxes let these guys get close at all, the referees will play a part in this ball game. So Quincy's gonna burn another timeout after the first free throw. Markov is good. They're gonna go on the, after the next free throw, Quincy's gonna call a timeout. Markov, one of two, will not be afforded that. 
opportunity for the Quincy coach who was thinking about calling it after the first free throw. Now it looks like he should have. It's a four point ball game, a minute and a half to go. Azor with it for Brockton to Montero. Montero in for Oak and Lola who's reached around by Chebo. Back out to Montero, his three Bang. is good. Bang. Yes. Big shot there by the senior. Jose Montero Jr. putting the boxes back up by seven. Zargas on the other side, no good. Azor with the offensive board, 1.15 to go, and Brockton can waste out 30 seconds of that. And a foul called on Markov, that'll be his fourth. Double bonus situation for the boxers, and now free throws at a premium as Marcus Azor has got to extend the boxer's lead here. It's a must, critical. We're at critical times right now at the free throw line. Timeout called by Dave Perry, the head coach of Quincy High School. With a minute and nine seconds left, Marcus Azor will be at the line for one more free throw attempt. Miles, this one has been a roller coaster. Yeah, it's it's really been a roller coaster, and um, this Quincy team just won't go away. Only thing that the uh, boxers got going for them, they've got a, um, only got one minute and nine seconds left in this ball game, and somehow they need to control that basketball. And when they do take the shot, they need to make the shot. Doesn't do any good to control the the ball, run down the clock, don't make the shot, and then Quincy comes down and makes the shot. And that's what Quincy's been doing these last minute or so. They've cut it down to seven points, but uh, Box has still got a long way to go. Miles, before foul trouble muddied it up, you've got a game ball to give to one player from each side. Who's got it? Well, as far as Quincy goes, I'd say uh, the guards there, either number 14 or number 12, you can even number 33 there has done a good job bringing them back with Zargas with those long shots. But for Brockton, I got to give it to the man at the free throw line, free throw line right now, uh, Azor. Marcus Azor has done a great job drawing fouls, going to the basket, making shots, making assists, and uh, just doing things that a senior guard should do in a playoff game. It's an eight point lead for the Boxers, 1.09 to go. Winner moves on to the South Sectional semifinal. Chebo blocked, and it's going to be a foul. Oak and Lola call for a hit. And Oak and Lola has fouled out of this game. Glenn Darty's gonna come in. He's got four personal fouls. It's nice to see he got a smile on his face. Talking to his coach. So Glenn Darty comes in for the fouled out. Oak and Lola with 104 to go. Glenn Darty has four personal fouls. More than one of them have been ticky tack should not have been called with the threshold that the ref set this afternoon. Yep, hats off to Oak and Dole. He played a great ball game underneath, controlled those boys, got a lot of rebounds, and uh, did his job this evening. Chebo good on his first attempt back to a seven point game, and two of two. That makes it officially a two possession ball game with 104 to go. Brockton, as Markov now has followed out of this game. And, and uh, that, that's because of Marcus Azor playing a smart basketball game, causing these Quincy guards to really try to smother him. And um, he's put one out. So coming in for Markov, it's going to be A.J. Nelson. Now let me tell you, Matt, I haven't seen uh, number 12, Fitzpatrick. Did he foul out? Yeah. He was given the, the tech in a personal. We haven't seen him since then. Since then, no. They only counted four fouls on him. But a tech means you have to come out for at least one possession. So maybe some crowd control for the Quincy president. As two or two at the line was Azor. A three, no good. Azor tipping it to Montero. Montero up to Jerese Harris. As Quincy now trying to foul Jerese Harris. And Come on, where's the no call? call? Where's the call? And they're going to call a timeout before they call the call. 
Jerese Harris was being assaulted. 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 And they didn't call anything. Okay, there's your threshold for the next 45 seconds. And even then, 45 seconds left. Boxes up by eight. I still don't feel comfortable. Do you, Matt? Absolutely not. Melvin Gonzalez is going to be the guy that the presidents try to get it to. He's been hot from the corner. Zargas a good choice as well. And well, a little bit underrated, Rami Chebo, number 20 for the presidents, has had a phenomenal game as well. Well, one good thing for Brockton, they've taken out of um, Quincy's team is their two starting guards, Fitzpatrick and uh, Markoff. Neither one is, is, is in there. Chevo's gonna come out, and Gonzalez is gonna come out, so Quincy has admitted defeat. Danny Keegan and Christian Falco, two seniors in as Quincy's going to finish with seniors on the floor. Accepting defeat here in Brockton. Now a foul committed by Keegan. More subs is, now it's just to get some feel good minutes. Thomas Lee is going to come into the game for the Presidents. Montero at the line, good on his first attempt. He's joined by Robert Andre. I like that, feel good minutes. Calibro and Zargis come out. That's what, when the bench players come in, they know the game's over. Two or two at the line, and that will seal this one. 36.4 to go. It's a 10 point lead for the boxers. Montero tipping the ball away from Andre. And now a block for Azor, but stepping out of play with it was Montero. So Quincy retains possession. 22 seconds left on the shot clock. Reverse left, very nice for Danny Keegan. That was a tough shot. Somehow he snuck it by the big man. Well, the marching orders are no fouls. 14 seconds to go. Brockton's going to waste out the next 10. And they'll come away with a 72-64 victory over the Quincy Presidents and move on to face either the Needham Rockets or the New Bedford Whalers. Miles, the theme of this is Brockton looked vulnerable. Yeah, they did. And um, they always have a slow start, but... They picked it up with their defense, and their defense created a lot of offense. And um, again, they, they put another team away here um, in, in the South Sectionals. So Miles, you faced the New Bedford Whalers twice. You have not seen the Needham Rockets. Which team are you hoping for in the South Sectional semifinals? I'd rather play New Bedford. They've seen New Bedford, like you said, twice. They haven't seen Needham. So um, you know there could be some surprises there. But they know New Bedford. They always get hyped up and ready for New Bedford. So I, me personally, I'd rather see them play New Bedford Whalers. Miles, your final thoughts on today's game? Well, again, Mark Azor stepped up as a senior. I'd have to give him the MVP. He drove to the basket. He had um, the defense commit fouls. He played a good game, protected the basketball all game, dished it off who he had to dish it off to, and just played an all-around senior-type guard basketball game. 72-64, to 64, your final score from Staff Gymnasium, the Boxers. Moving on to the South Sectional Semifinals against either the Needham Rockets or the New Bedford Whalers. That game will be on Tuesday night at Taunton High School. We'll have it for you on Brockton Community Access. Meanwhile, the Quincy Presidents, their season has come to an end here in Brockton. 72 to 64, your final score here at Staff Gymnasium. Brockton getting the win over Quincy for everyone here at Brockton Community Access. Our camera crew, Katya Andrade, Aaron Tebow and Mike the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. My broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game. Here with victorious coach Bob Bowen. Coach, we saw some phenomenal waves and swings in this game where Quincy was able to take a lead at one point. You led by as much as 13 in the first half. Talk about those swings and how you were able to stem the tide. Well, again, we had to start pressing again uh, to get the, uh, get the lead back. Yeah, they, uh, they did a nice job. They had scouted us well. They knew what we were trying to do, and uh, they gave us some trouble. And we got a little careless. 
Uh, as you say, we got up 13, and then we started to try and do some things that we're not really supposed to do. So the message at halftime was drop the fancy footwork. We saw a couple of turnovers and travels because of players taking the extra step and trying to make it look fancy. Talk about your message at halftime and how you were able to stem the turnovers in the second half. Well, that was the message at halftime. I don't know if we stemmed them. We still had a couple of those uh, footwork turnovers in the second half. Uh, we did we got a little action off of our press and we got some easy baskets on offense. And we had a couple of good drives there and finishes. It was a wild night. Wild, absolutely. Fouls played a factor in this one. Talk about the performance of Glenn Darty, Oak, and Lola, who eventually fouled out of this game, and how you were able to keep the bench involved as more and more players got into foul trouble. Yeah, well, we had to use a lot of the bench, but we always used a lot of the bench. Uh, Sonny and Tyshawn both had four fouls on them. I think that was more our defense out front, though, was letting guys get into the paint and causing them to have trouble covering somebody. So you move on to face either the Needham Rockets or the New Bedford Whalers. You've seen New Bedford twice, haven't seen much of Needham. So who are you hoping for in the South Sectional Semifinals and explain what you're looking forward to in that matchup? Oh, we're not looking, we're not hoping for anyone. We're gonna go see the game tomorrow and uh, whoever wins it is who we'll play. We don't, we're not hoping for anyone. Coach, we'll see you on Tuesday at Taunton High School. Congratulations on the win. Very good, thanks.